Amen. Everyone has a card? I, I gave these out. I'm sure everyone knows the Lord's prayer, prayer or has a good understanding of it. But I also gave it out so that during the week, you know, keep it in your pocket, keep it in your, in your wallet. You know, in fact, you don't even have to look at it, but just know that you have it. You know, will remind you of, of the words that are written on the page. It's not the paper. It's not really even the words, but it's who wrote it. And it's yours. It's always been yours, but now you're going to keep it with you. When I was younger, we used to have rabbits for. Do you remember those? Yes. We used to have them on our keychain and everything yes. like that, right? Amen. You know, sometimes you visit people. They have a used to have a horseshoe yes. o o over the door, and yes. some of, some of my um, my Jewish brothers and sisters have the the, the, the Methuselah, the, 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 the thing up there with the, the, Torah, the Torah on the door. On the door yeah. You know, all, all kind of things. People go to play sports, and they got the, the lucky sneakers on. You know, all this kind of stuff, you know. But we have the Word of God. Amen. Right. Amen. You have the Word of God. You're going to walk around it with it with you. And if you can memorize the Lord's Prayer, it will help you. Because sometimes we feel fatherless, don't we? Amen. Amen. Even if we got a father, he might be crazy. But when you know who, who, who it is, you know, no one can touch you. Am I right or wrong? You're right. Amen. 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 I'm not going to be with you long. I don't tend to preach long. I, I never preach long, really. I just try to preach as hard as I can and get the point across and move on. Amen? Amen. 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 This week was an amazing week for us as, as a people. We saw what happened in Charleston, South Carolina. I, I lived there for, for some years, so it, it, it kind of affected me in, in a double way. But the most important thing that I saw out of that is, is that someone came to a church uh, and, and, and he sat with them for an hour. Yes. And, and they had Bible study. And there they were like nine people, maybe two or three in the office. And he sat there um, during the Bible study. He was a stranger. And it had to have been a good pastor b b because the, the stranger came in. And, and he asked for the pastor by name. And it says, there's our pastor right there. I know a lot of churches you go to. This is not a small church. You just can't have access to the pastor in a lot of our churches. Yeah. You just can't. You could be a member for 20 years, but you got to make an appointment. But this was the kind of pastor who, who they knew they could have access to. And he said, come right in, come, have a seat. He sat next to the pastor. And, and, and they broke the word of God. And, 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 and they, 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 they prayed. And they didn't know what was going to happen. And this will be the, their last prayer. The, the last day on earth. Yeah. The last few breaths, the last few beats of their hearts, and, yeah. and, and, and they got up out of their houses or from work on this Wednesday evening, and, and, and they came dutifully, just, just a few people out of a large church, just a few, and they came to serve God, and, and a stranger came in, and Jesus tells us not to be um, respecters of persons, yeah. right. and that sometimes we don't know who we're entertaining, we could be entertaining angels, they entertain an angel of death. Right. And, and, this, and, and this man, he, he said they, they were so nice to him that he almost didn't do it. But, the, but whatever it is that was in him, and it had to be diabolical, overcame the niceness. And he shot them. He was racist, though. Okay. He shot them. And he, he shot them over and over because he, he, had, he reloaded his gun. He, he had a, a large capacity weapon. So he, he, he shot all his bullets, and then he, he reloaded. Then he shot those bullets too, and he reloaded. And he shot those bullets also. So they're dead or dying, and he's shooting them anyway. So he meant to do what he meant to do. And, and this church in, in that he committed this heinous act, it, 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 it had amazed me, the people who attended this church, because the, the, the founders of, of the first black church in the United States, Richard Allen, who started his church right here in Philadelphia, knew the founder of the church, Emmanuel AME, in Charleston, South Carolina. They were colleagues, and they worked together to, to do this thing. And, and they did this because the Methodist church wanted the blacks to sit up in the back in the balcony and could never really be a part of the church. They, were, they segregated blacks in, in, in the house of worship. So these strong men, with, with, with the strength of pride and, and with God with them, started these things. So the, these, this church was a protest church. And one of the members of the church was Denmark Vesey. He was, he was a, a free man during that time. And he, he planned an armed insurrection against Charleston, South Carolina slave owners. 
before John Brown, before Frederick Douglass, before the Civil War. He planned it, but, but he, he was, he, he was uh, ratted on. They, they turned him in, a, a fellow brother. And, 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 and he, was, he, was, he was hanged. And the place where he was hanged, um, it's, it's, it's Citadel Square in, in, in Charleston. And now a library sits on, on, on the spot, which is, which is where I first saw the plaque. And this church, they, they burnt it down in, in, in 1910 because they were so hard and strong against civil rights. Right there in the, in the heart of the South where the first shots of the Civil War started, these people fought. And they burnt the church down to the ground and they rebuilt it. And when our civil rights movement started 50 years later in, in the 1960s, this, this church was, was one of the, the, the strongholds of the civil rights movement. Coretta Scott King herself led a march from that church. So this, this is not some Rudy Pooh church. And, and in fact, in 1963, when, when they started the marching, that was the year that South Carolina put the, the Confederate flag on its capital. It was not always their flag. That's the flag of the Confederacy of Northern Virginia. It, it was not South Carolina's flag, but they put it there in, in, in response to the Civil Rights Movement. So that, 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 that viciousness was always there. One of the great heroes of South Carolina is Ben Tillman. They named the housing project after Ben Tillman, Ben Pitchfork Tillman. And he used to brag. He, he said, he said like, like this, this gentleman who shot these people, he always said that these Negroes wanted to rape our women. And he says, what I'm gonna do, I wanna leave them stiff and stark. He wanted black people not to vote. So he would shoot black people so that they would not vote. And he loved them so much, there's a statue of him on, on the state ground. So when people talk about it, there's no racism, and they talk about it, it's not a, a terroristic thing, there's a deep history of, 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 of this church and what, it's, what it means to the United States. And there's a deep history of what the man had in his mind concerning black people. He said, you rape our women, which is a lie. Look how many colors we are. And that didn't happen by accident. So I don't want to hear about this rape stuff. Right. Huh? And, 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 and he said, we were taking over the country. We can't even find a job. Look at how our neighborhoods are. Right. We ain't taking over nothing. We, we are struggling just to feed ourselves and, 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 and to keep ourselves from being shot by the police and by our neighbors. We ain't taking over nothing. But in their minds, they, they, they're, they're so filled with hate and imaginary demons in their mind pushing them to do things that they ought not do. But the Lord God sits on high, and, 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 and God is using their lives as a testimony to us today. They testified in church, you testified in church to say, you will not be stopped. They will not be stopped. Their lives march on. This life is just for an, an instant. Don't cherish it too much, because you stand and do what you're supposed to do, and watch God make it happen. Christ gave his life so that this world can move on, that we can be greater. These people gave their lives also. They stood in the gap to the end. A long history of people standing up no matter what racists are supposed to do. So I honor them. These are martyrs. These are saints. These are people chosen by God to do a great thing. And I honor their lives this morning. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going we're gonna to look. Everyone has, has, of course, the Lord's Prayer. And of course, we're honoring, honoring God our Father. And we're going to look at fathers today. We're going to talk about fathers. First of all, the, 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 the pastor in the church, and, and I digress, was a father also. He, he was, and his, his, mother, his, his wife and daughter were in an office when the shooting occurred. And, and this is Father's Day. So they're going through, let's lift them up in prayer. I thank my mother for mentioning Minister Brandon. He was a father. He is a father. And when his baby girl was born, I think she was maybe three months. She was born super duper immature. She was a pre a pre Premature, premature. Yeah, premature, not immature, like I'm thinking. <laughs> premature. And, and he said she was so small he could hold her in his hand. Mm -hmm. And they said she had like a 10% chance of surviving. But she runs around this church and causes havoc. I seen him take a crayon from her one day mm -hmm. and look to your old girl, grab him up on his collar. Big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so God will make it happen. Don't you worry, because it may look bad for, for, for us. We may think that there's only a 10% chance you're going to make it, but this child can do it, and she's small. How much more can we do? So, so hold, just hold on, okay? Just a little while longer. That's all you have to do. This, the, the, this pastor in the church, also a father, when I heard the members of the church speak at the hearing of, 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 of the killer, they said they forgive this man. And, and, and that's a testament to what this pastor taught. 
Because if he was talking about money or hatred, there could be no forgiveness. I, I don't think that, 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 that a more um, aggressive church could have that kind of message. But he had it. And, and he was a good father because he, he enabled people to have love in their mourning rather than to have bitterness and hate and, and to let that knife in the back fester in their wounds. Amen? Amen. But we're look, look to God at the Father. We're going to look at um, Matthew 17, 14 to 23. You can turn to your Bible if you like. I'm going to read it into your hearing. This is a, a common part of the Bible. And it, 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 it speaks of also what we're going through and how, thank you my brother, and how we're going to get out of it. Matthew 17, verses 14 to 21. Verses 14 to 21. Matthew 14, verses... Matthew 17, verses 14 to 21. Now, it's New Testament. It goes, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Like, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. That's all you got to remember. Okay? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it reads, And when they came to the crowd, a man came to him, kneeling and saying, and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and grievously vexed. For oftentimes he falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it shall move, and nothing shall be impossible for you, to you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Lord, we thank you, we love you, we magnify you. We adore you, we lift you up. We give you the praise and the honor and the glory. We thank you for your word and for your, this day to honor you, God. Bless each person who thought it not Robert to come out today, Lord. Bless each need, bless each heart, O oh Father God. Let each person forgive themselves whatever they, they fell short in, O oh Father God. Let them hold on to you and nothing else. Let them to hold on to you more than they hold on to shame. Let them hold on to you more than they hold on to regret. Let them hold on to you more than they hold on to hurt. Let them hold on to you even in good times, O oh Father God, in flat times, O oh God, but in all times. Lord, we love you, we magnify you, and we adore you. In your holy name we say, Amen. Amen. This, this Bible verse I had looked at many years ago, maybe about five years ago, and it, it amazed me. It, it amazed me because, number one, it was a father doing the thing. And, and the father found that his child was in need. And I wish we had more fathers like that, but we have a few in the midst today. We have Minister Brandon to, to look at. And, and this, this child was sick. And, and, and the Bible says he was a lunatic. He was a crazy child. Sometimes we're the only ones who would stand up for our children. Crazy. Child out of his mind. And, and the Bible says that the child would throw himself into the fire to hurt himself. And throw himself into the water. Now, that, that word in the Bible is not necessarily fire. It, 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 the word means the lightning. So the, the, the child would like wait and see where it's going to strike and run out to it. So this is not just, a, if it was a child throwing himself in fire, they, well, we're going to have a lot of water running around him. There's not going to be much fire. But they couldn't hold him because he, he would find, find times of, of lightning and, and try to get struck by the lightning. And whenever he was near water, he would try to drown himself. Such was the torment of this child. And, and the father brought the child to the disciples. And he said to Jesus, Jesus, I brought my son to the disciples. I brought my son to church. I brought my son to prayer meeting. Like that man, he came to church and came to prayer meeting, but it could not be done. And Jesus said to them, you, you, you perverse generation, 
And that word perverse means that we distort the word of God, that we misinterpret it, that we don't understand how to deal with, 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 with this situation at all. Number one, in those days, if you, were, if you were deemed a lunatic or you had something wrong with you, you couldn't bring a sacrifice in, in, into the synagogue. So you were banned. So that means that if the son who wanted healing, the father wanted healing for, 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 for his son. He couldn't say, Here, uh, here's the means in which to get your healing. Sometimes people treat us like that. You got to have money to come to a church. You got to have the, 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 the right pedigree for, for them to take time with you. If you're not tithing and giving a good offering, they just might send a deacon, maybe. And this was the, the situation. They found him not good enough to get help. The child wants to kill himself. The child had this condition since birth. The child is seeking to destroy himself. And these people had the power of God within them. They could have got it done if they wanted it to get done. They had the ability. They were children of God. But they sought not to do it. They say, we don't want those type in, in church. We don't, want, we don't want kids like that who are acting crazy. We don't want the bad people. We want the good and clean people. In fact, even if he gave us um, an offering, we don't want it. And he's banned. So the child could not even bring an offering to church to atone for his circumstances. And that's why Jesus came to the people who, who, who were always turned out by the church. The, the people who, who, who nobody thought were, were, were any worth at all. And that's why I say, lift up your heads, O ye people. Lift up your heads and hold your hands high. Because we are the ones that Christ is looking for. We are the ones in which, in which he came to, to serve. Those who will sit on high and look down low and got their nose up at people and think that they got God in the corner in their pocket and, and, and in their wallets. The devil is a liar. Be, be, because there's nothing but the devil is going to want a child sick and you can help them. You don't want anybody sick and you can help them. But Jesus said, said, bring the child. Bring him here to me. You see, sometimes people say children should not come up and children should not be, 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 be helped. But then the word of God says that, that suffer not the little children and, and, and bring them on to me. I'm sorry if I'm misquoting myself, but you know what I'm talking about. Amen. It don't matter how old you are. It don't matter how how young or old you are. Bring your problem to Jesus. And they had this problem. For, for years the child had this problem. They couldn't get it done. And Jesus said, how long shall I suffer with you? How long sh should I get this done? Jesus was there with, with, with the curing power, but they couldn't get it done. And the problem was not upon the father or the son. It was under the disciples. You see, sometimes that's, that's our issue because, because we got... We, all the children that look like us are our children. It's always been that way. When I was growing up, if I did something wrong, the neighbors would rat me out. They, they, there was a neighbor called Miss Lane. And everything that I did, Miss Lane told my mother. I think she had binoculars. I hated Miss, Miss Lane. <laughs> Tell her. And, and I knew I was in trouble. I was, I was in big trouble. I saw Miss Lane like 30 years ago. And, and I had finished school and everything. I said, Miss Lane, you remember me? She says, yeah, you was the devil. Oh. But, <laughs> but you know, if it wasn't for people like Miss Lane to keep me in line, to tell my mother, who knows what, what, what I could have done. I could have hurt myself because I was like this child. We're all like, we all will become like this child if we don't have people to, to look out for, for us. So when our kids are going bad, we, we can be like the, these the disciples. We won't get the job done. So because we, 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 we're afraid, or we, we think just thinking about it and not liking it is, 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 is sufficient, because, but it's not. Jesus says that when we do these things, we become perverse. We become distorters of the word when we're not looking out for our own children. And many times, the children that we need to look out for, the child that we need to look out for, is the child within our own heart. That child who was beaten. That child who was kicked in a corner. That child who was tossed upside down and let fall to the ground. That child who nobody wanted. That child who said, you could not amount to nothing. It's still there. Don't, don't, don't you ever for one minute think that, that that child is not there. That child is still there if it's unhealed. And sometimes we are people who go to church and there's an injured child within ourselves are just as inept as these disciples. 
And Jesus told him that, that, that if we just had the faith, thank you, my sister, for, for, for bringing out the word of the faith of a mustard seed. If we just had the faith of, 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 of a kernel of a mustard seed. Now, mustard seed is like almost a microscopic thing. It's like, I don't know, three or four grains of, of, of sugar put together. It's that tiny. If you inhale it, if, 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 if you like to breathe heavy and then bring a mustard seed under your nose, you'll get a mustard seed into your lungs. That's how small it is. It's like a big grain of sand. That's all it is. Very tiny, very tiny. But it grows to the, one of the greatest trees we can find. And Jesus said, not even the entire mustard seed, but the kernel of the mustard seed. And the kernel of the mustard seed is the inner part of it, the live part that you plant, not the husk of it. The inner part of it, the live part. So your faith could be small. He's not worried about how your faith looks to the, other wor uh, to the world. He's not interested in, in how we might look for the outside. But, but what's inside? Is it a living faith? You don't have to have a monstrous faith. You don't have to have faith that is, that is so great and large like people who might walk around and do great deeds to show you that, 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 that they're faithful. That's not it. But it's, it's just believing that even though things are so hard, that you're going to hold on until tomorrow. That you're going to hold on for another hour. That you're going to just right now, for whatever it takes, just for this minute, you're, you're just going to hold on and wait to see what happens. That's all that it takes. And that mountain shall be removed. But the reason why they couldn't get it done, and the reason why we can't get it done as a people, is because we don't, they, the disciples had faith. The man had faith. But our faith is such that it doesn't, we don't have miracle believing faith, and that's the problem, you see. You see, we can believe faith that God's gonna wake us up. We can have faith that, that, that we're gonna get a job someday. We, we can have a faith that we're gonna get a spouse. We, we got faith for that. We got a faith that that, that bill's gonna get paid and the light ain't gonna turn out. We got faith for that. We got a faith that we're gonna have something to eat. We got a faith for all these basic things. But when it comes time for faith for miracles, it is few and far between. And the reason why we're not getting it done is because we don't have miracle working faith. Because we never tried it. We never exercised those muscles. We never ran the marathon because we never even started walking. So, so if you want the faith that, 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 can, that can move mountains, and those mountains are things that just rear up in your path. It, 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 it might be shame rearing up in your path. It might be hurt. It, it might be things that you got a taste for you shouldn't have a taste for. It, it, it could be someone left you and, and, and that mountain is still there. You feel, I could never climb that mountain again. You may be disappointed yourself, you did something wrong. You may feel, I could never climb that mountain again. There is the mountain, I'm gonna stay down there. But the funny thing is that if there are no valleys that you're in, there are no mountains. So the two are connected. So even though you're in the valley, the only reason why you see a mountain is because you're in the valley. So all you gotta do is just climb out. All you gotta do is have enough strength to get from point A to point B and you'll come out. And the way in which you get there, sometimes you're gonna to have to deny yourself. That's the hard part. I'm telling you, that's the hard part. That's the hard part for me. I, I'm, I'm not a faster, but lately I found the power to do it. And it's an easy fast. I just stopped eating at seven o'clock. And it's, it's worked great strength in my life, and it's true. You, you have to try to deny yourself one thing. Jesus said that these things come out only through prayer and fasting. So while we're dealing with, 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 with racists who want to throw our behinds in the, in the, in the lightning and in, in the water, they want to throw us in, in, in the fire. And they sit with us and they would pray with us. But the next minute when church is over, they want to shoot and kill us. This is an everyday thing for us. This is not a Charleston thing. It's a Philadelphia thing. And, and the enemy doesn't care who he might use, a 20-year-old white male, a 20-year-old black male, a 65-year-old black male. He will use them to take us out. Why does he want to take us out? Why are we the, 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 um, the hunted? It's because God loves you. I'm telling you, it's because God loves you. Let me tell you, the devil don't bother those who he already has. He's not going to bother people in other lands. He's not going to bother people who are over there doing good. He wants you dead. Now, and it's not because you're evil. If you were evil, the devil wouldn't bother with you. He'll probably give you some blame because he, he, he wants people to be like you. But when he, he, when he hates you to, to his heart, because he knows what he's dealing with. People who love God, we love God. There's a church everywhere for us. We can't walk a corner in our church and our neighbors and not see a church. I don't care where you go. I've been to a few states. And every state I go to, I go to the ghetto. There's always a liquor store, a Chinese food, and a church. And a deli. Thank you. And a deli. So, so 
we are blessed, but we just have to get connect with the miracle working power and the things that we have to stop doing. And the thing we have to stop doing, you must decide for yourself. Because you know what it is. You know what you can do. If you want a miracle in your life, and, and I know you want a miracle, if you want these things off you, if you are throwing yourself from the, from in the fire to the water, if, if you got a, a child who, who's going through difficulty, if you got a mountain in your life that you want re re removed, and, and, and you, you think you're not enough, all you need is the faith of a mustard seed, just a little bit of life in you to say, I'm going to do one thing. All you got to do is take one step. Take one step. That's all you have to do. All it takes sometimes is one day of not doing a, a thing. Maybe I'm not gonna drink alcohol today. When I used to drink, that's how it started, just one day. I stopped drinking one day, that was rough, my hand was shaking and everything, it was rough. But the second day was easier, amen? And the third day, wasn't so bad either. I'm glad nobody came around with alcohol, but it gets easier, and that's all it takes. It's just for today. It's just for, for this moment, and miracles happen. Now you, I look back at everything, the miracle happened. Yes. It's over, that fight is over. Step by step by step. And, 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 and I say to us as a people, no one's coming to save us. Hear me now, Jesus is coming to judge us. Right. <laughs> He's not coming to save you because he's going to say to you, I've given you John 3.16. Where you at, Deborah? He, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And, and, and because we don't believe in him, we don't have that everlasting life, that life that's going to last no matter what comes. You know, so, so he's not coming to, to save. He's coming to judge. You have to do it yourself because he gave you everything he had. The Bible also says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He gave them to you. And then he gave you his son. And then he gave you life. And then he gives you day after day breath. And he gives you the ability today to do one thing for him. And that's to stop one thing. Fast one thing. Deny yourself one. He says prayer and fasting. And he doesn't mean just prayer, oh Lord, Lord, help me, Jesus. He means believing in the miracle that you want for your life. And then fast for it. There's no other way. And we got hard things for our lives. We got things in our lives that we can't get done. That keep dogging our heels. And we wake up in the morning and, and, and the beast is staring us in our face. Just waiting for us to make a move. And we make a move. Man, take two steps and it's over. The fight's over. But sometime you just got to say, I'm not you're going to fight you, beast. I'm going to go over here and deal with something, do something for myself. Maybe I might just drink water today. That might be my fast. No soda today. Maybe I just might do one thing today. And God is like that. All the man, the man didn't have any money or anything. He just brought his child to Jesus. Why can't you bring your child to Jesus? Why can't you bring your inner child to Jesus? Why can't you bring your problem to Jesus? That's all you have to do. It is not your fight. The battle is the Lord's, but you got to be a willing soldier. You have to get it done. You have to try. You have to do things. When I was in the military, we went through boot camp, and that was nothing but denial. Had to get up 4.30 in the morning every, every morning. I thought I would cry. I thought I was on another planet. I couldn't even understand it. But you know what? It, 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 it gives me a build that I never had before that I used to now. To focus. And that's all we have to do. Go through the steps. Do something new and different. If you can take a, 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 a reefer smoking troubled child and turn him into a weapon of warfare, you know, in six weeks, what more can we do for our lives in six weeks? I'm telling you, it can happen. I see kids going to military all the time, just as crazy and stumbling over their own shoelaces, and they come out spit shine, marching like this. And because they go through a process, we can do it on our own. And it doesn't have to be the start. You can do it. The enemy tells you you can't do it. He tells you you can't be new. But I tell you every time, you got to just write this thing down. That's another thing. Write it down what you want. Tell God what you want. Because it focuses your mind. Focus your mind on something. Hold on to something. Aren't you tired of day to day the same crap? day in, day out, the same person kicking your behind, the same person shooting you down, the same person saying you ain't nothing, the same failure every night going to bed with, the same foolishness waking up with, yeah. there was a song, good morning heartache, and, and why do we have to live this way? Put that heartache aside, don't even face the heartache anymore, turn around do something else, turn towards the Lord, let the heartache be there, let the knife in your back stay there, go to Jesus and watch him take, watch him take it out for you. You know, that the, the, 
See, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against wickedness and principalities in high places. So we're not going to get this thing done by fighting or by flesh. We just got to do what Jesus said. Pray. Fast. No big fast. Do a fast of something. Do a fast of no cussing. Do a fast of no evil thinking. Do a fast of no lusting. Do a fast of doing kind deeds. Do a fast of reading the Bible. Do a fast of even praying. But you know, pray three times a day. That's a fast too. But I tell you, it's what we put in our mouth that affects us so greatly. In fact, what we put in our mouth can kill us. It's called poison. What we put in our mouth can heal us. It's called medicine. And the very closely intertwined. What we put in our mouth can cause heart attack and all sorts of health problems. What we put in our mouth also can give us health and life and strength. What can we do if we put the right things in our mouth and put God in our hearts? We become unstoppable. The Bible says that, that, that Abraham and Sarah was 100, almost 100 years old and what she was still looking good and she still had the ability. That's a miracle. Why you hold on to God? Don't ever think that it can't be done for you. Who is man that can tell you can't do it? Why do we believe we can't get it done? Who told you that lie? I rebuke the lie right now in the name of Jesus. The devil is what? A liar. And he'll tell you can't do it. You can do this thing. You can win the race. Look at Martin Luther King Jr. They told him, don't complain so loud. Don't do this. But the man fought to the end. And thank God for him that he did these things. Malcolm X, he fought to the end. People thought that he could not do it. In fact, the, the, the history is clear. They said Ma Michael Jordan couldn't play basketball. Michael Jordan was not, was not a favorite basketball player. He couldn't play. But that man believed. And look at him now. How much does he make last year, son of George Nickers? $500 million. You can do it. They can, you don't care what would it look like. You can get the job done. Amen? Amen. And what we need to do, we need to pray. What we need to do, we need to fast. We need to believe in miracles because it can happen. Amen? Amen? Amen. And I'm done. Please stand. Yeah. Oh, okay.